And she looked around here, and she looked around there, and she said, oh, you'll outgrow it. <laughs> hey, Mom, I'm 82 years old. <laughs> it only got worse. <laughs> out as a school teacher and I taught in various inner city schools in New York and uh, Boston and finally Atlanta which was really an adventure it was when they were starting to integrate the schools so I was the first white teacher to enter a, a black school and then I fell into the food business because food was always my great passion I wrote 27 cookbooks 27, count them, 27. <laughs> but one day, 20 odd years ago, very odd years ago, <laughs> I, was, I was correcting the proofs of my 27th cookbook. There I was with scrap paper and highlighters and markers, very relaxed, correcting the proofs. And my hand picked up a marker and my hand drew a mermaid on a piece of paper. I had never done anything like that before in my life because I knew I couldn't. And it had a fish for a hat, and it had snakes. It was very mythological, it was very fogarty. It was completely compelling. So I looked at the mermaid, and the mermaid looked at me. She was in charge. I became completely obsessed with drawing. I had some sort of an epiphany, or a psychotic break, or the muse bit me in the bum. But more likely, it was the menopause. Something strange happened to me. And I became, suddenly, I was no longer a cookbook writer. I was no longer a chef and a cook and whatever. I was an artiste. All my art is about women and the fact that we are goddesses. That kind of art that I make and other people I know make, it doesn't come from the head. It doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the gut. We haven't been taught what to do. We make up our own techniques. We make up our own materials. And we just do it. That is art. It's very exciting to me. But I am extremely prolific and I don't really sell my work. So my whole life now is art. I am art. I am color. Don't make your plans too structured. Every once in a while, a window will open just out of sight, and you'll see, out of the corner of your eye, you'll see that glimmer of light, and you'll feel that waft of a breeze. Don't ignore it. You never know what's going to happen. You never know. It happened to me. It could happen to you. <laughs> I love London. I really love London, and I feel like I belong here. Everybody is expressing themselves outside, so you don't need to go to the museum. The whole damn East End is a museum. You know, people say they want to be close to nature, I want to go. No, I want to see graffiti, I want to see people dressed weirdly, I want to see life. always refer to me as eccentric. I don't see that. To me, the word eccentric is somebody who puts it on. It's, it's very pretentious. I don't feel that I'm eccentric. I am what I am. Because I make all this stuff and my friends make things for me, and I am surrounded by my art and the art of people I love, when I walk out the door, I don't want to leave it behind. So I wrap myself in it. So there, there are people who are very judgmental. I really don't care. But somebody said, well, she just wants people to look at her, doesn't she? Yes, of course I do. What would be the point? I want to educate people about being brave the way they dress. For God's sakes, don't wear beige. It might kill you. I think that people who dress bland and they decide that gray is the color of uh, du jour, so they paint their houses gray. They're really eccentric. What kind of nonsense is that? 
No, do it my way. That's the only way. It's not eccentric. It is the right way. <laughs> the older I get, the crazier I can be because who's going to who's going to stop me? <laughs> Hello? Is Callie there? Oh, she's busy. Please have her call me back. It's Sue. We'll have a little chat later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> there is a Barbie chandelier there. And there's one here that has actual goddesses on each push button. Kids love me because they say, oh, look at the Tweety Bird. And then... So when I'm walking in the street wearing this and people say, ah, oh, and then I pull the string and it plays a little tune. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? These are two ladies, very privileged, entitled ladies. They're, shh, they're out shopping and they're wearing their fancy duds and they're trying to decide, do they want um, spirituality or cappuccino? And they go for cappuccino every single time. And you can see their inner beauty is escaping because they're very materialistic ladies. I really have a very good time. <laughs> it's very good for the mental health to live in this crazy life.